So growing up as what I would consider an extreme introvert, I always had various reactions towards wanting to spend more time alone than around people, wanting to eat alone, wanting to watch TV alone, to work out alone, to dance alone, to walk alone. All of those things from my family and from my friends, they couldn't understand and a lot of times it was considered to be, oh, she's a strange one. And even in university, wanting to have my lunch on my own, I always went out of my way to go and try to have my lunch alone in a different classroom uh, away from the cafeteria and that really gave me a lot of looks and a lot of judgment throughout my whole life. And I think it's very fitting during this time of quarantine, of lockdown, uh, when a lot of us are forced to spend time alone to finally make this video. And maybe for those of you who are having a little bit of a harder time spending time alone, maybe I can give you a different view on being alone and spending time alone. And maybe you'll start seeing it as a good thing and maybe it'll bring you more benefits than you know. I think the first question that we need to ask ourselves, why do we tend to feel bad for people that want to spend time alone? And why is it when we see someone eating alone, we tend to feel bad for them? And I think that's purely human nature. And even me, someone who loves to spend 90% of my time alone, I tend to feel bad when I see an old person eating alone or just a woman eating alone or a man eating alone and that is purely human nature. Human interaction is part of us as people. We need that human touch, we need the human affection, we need to talk to other people. And I think we need to start normalizing solitude versus loneliness. Solitude is positive, loneliness is very negative. We can feel lonely while being with other people. We can feel lonely in a relationship. We can feel lonely with friends and we can feel lonely in a family. Solitude, on the other hand, is very positive in my opinion. We can spend time alone and not feel lonely. For me, the first and main reason why I love to spend my time alone is because it allows me to get in touch with my intuition. My intuition drives just about everything in my life. My decisions, my behavior, my way of life, where I'm going, why I'm doing certain things. And so the only way for me to stay true to myself and stay in touch with who I truly am and listen to my subconscious and listen to my intuition is to spend more time alone and I think that we all have a certain degree of intuition and I think the more time we spend alone the more we get that subconscious mind to come out no social media no phone no TV just us with ourselves and maybe a journal and that's why people meditate and that's why meditation is so mainstream nowadays is because spending time alone is the best way of taking care of ourselves. It is one of the reasons why I have never had one regret in my life about any decision that I've made before. And I think that regret comes from two things. One, making decisions based on what other people want and two, making impulsive decisions on the spot while not knowing what we want. And the only way to know what we truly, truly want is to spend more time alone, get in touch with who you really are. And that will result in thoughtful action. Without you really even realizing it, you'll start making decisions that will benefit you, benefit the people that you love, and that are healthy for you. Solitude is also a way for me to self-preserve. Self-preserve my true self, my naked self, as I like to call it, who I was born to be before my environment and my society and my school and my parents and my family told me who to be. And no matter how extreme my decisions might have seemed to other people, for me they were only natural. They were never even a question to begin with. And that self-preservation concept of solitude is 
the best contributor to that. It allows me to take care of myself without outside noise. I always like this example of the Buddhist monks. And even though I'm not Buddhist, and if you're not either, um, just think of a Buddhist monk in your head. And what do they represent to you? To me, and I think for you too, they represent a symbol of peace. And the Buddhist monks spend more time alone than any other person in the world. And that's for a reason. They spend time meditating, reflecting, getting in touch with the subconscious, with the universe, with their soul. And I think that's the highest tool of self-care that we can all use. That's why meditating is so mainstream nowadays because we have gotten to a point with social media where we're constantly fed information that we should be somebody else. And it's done in a brilliant way. Not brilliant in a good way, but in a genius way. Because you don't realize it, but it's affecting us. And for all of my Gen Zs out there, we were raised with social media. And that's why right now mental health issues are at their peak. We see anxiety disorders at their peak. We see depression, we see suicide rates going up. And I'm not here to say, oh, damn you, social media. I am here to blame social media. Definitely not. Social media is a great tool for many, many things. But I think that one of the ways to combat the bad influence of social media on us is to spend time alone, away from social media, away from TV, away from any outside noise. And the greatest tool that we have as humans is our freedom. Not our freedom physically, although physical freedom is great and spending time in nature is great and spending time walking is great. But by freedom, I mean mental freedom, thinking for ourselves, making our own choices for ourselves, thinking critically and not being fed information that is going to influence our decisions. And if you are someone who struggles with spending time on your own because I do know certain people in my life that have come up to me and asked me, how is it that you can spend time alone? I go crazy in quarantine or I go crazy in lockdown and I always try to tell them this. I want you to take some time and ask yourself this. Why do I have such a hard time spending time alone? And I think the answer to that question is 100% going to be that you are running away from something, that you're running away from a thought, from an action that you did in the past, from your situation. Something in you is making you uncomfortable to be alone. And I want you to ask yourself what it is. And I think you will not be able to maybe find the answer immediately, but the more you spend time alone and the more you ask yourself that question, the more you will see the power of it. And when you find the answer to that question, then you've just opened the door of Pandora. If it is a thought in your mind, or if it is an action that you did in the past, do your best to come into terms with that action. If it is your environment, what is it in your environment that makes you feel uncomfortable, that makes you want to get away from it and be around other people? Try to fix it. If not, try your best to live with it. That's the best way that you can have the healthiest relationship with yourself and therefore have the healthiest relationship with everyone around you. Canceling the noise around you has great power. You'll be able to find answers about who you are and what you want and who you were meant here to be. If all of us get to that answer and all of us find our place in society and do what we were meant here to do, each one of us will be peaceful and I think that will be the greatest utopia of all time. I will end the video on this note. I hope you will be able to spend more time with yourself and enjoy that time with yourself. And I hope you will find peace with yourself and hopefully one day reach your purpose and we can all reach our higher selves. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in my next one.